This week's episode of Awesome Cast is brought to you by Drobo, the lovely people who will make sure that your data is safe at all times. Go ahead and check it out at awesomecast.com. Click on the Drobo link on the right-hand side to learn more. The Awesome Cast 74, we are here straight out of Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Hi, I'm Sorg, and uh, we're going to talk some tech today, and I don't know, did anybody read a good book this week? Uh, we'll find out first, of course, from... We just had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Rob De La Creta. Yes. How you doing? Coming Hi. from, is that the cotton? No, you're eating. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm in the cotton factory for a full detail. My hair is wet. <laughs> um, I'm a little warm. I'm wearing wool socks, and it's way too warm in here. Wow. Uh, I am in the cotton factory, and I'm eating. I'm not sure what this is composed of. Uh, it's definitely Rice Krispies, uh, but I feel like there's like a there's like an almondy something to it. It's from Dozen Dozen Bakery. They don't suck now. I don't know if you heard. New news. Wow. New news. Yeah, it was huge. Like this thing, uh, which was given to me by somebody else. But apparently it was like originally like this big. This thing that resembles a muffin. This big and like that thick for like $2. Wow. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Well, it's amazing what new ownership will do. There you go. Right? So, so I know I haven't, I haven't introduced yet, but I recently did this thing on Twitter where I said Norman versus food. And it was me trying to eat a dozen cupcake. And I almost couldn't finish it because it was just too massive. Like. My new thing is that if you're going to have a cupcake or a muffin, I don't want it to be a meal. I just want it to be a snack. You know, I want it to be oh, yeah. a total, total yeah. thing. So, my two cents. There he is, Norm Hulesman, marketing manager for iTwixie.com, where he gets right. to hang out with teenage girls. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> no, it's not teenage girls, it's preteen. Preteen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tweens. Uh, Tweens is, the, is the thing. Tweenagers. So oh, I can't thank you. Yes, I was hanging out with him earlier. Thank you, Norm, for uh, for popping in in a pinch. And, uh, and, and, and can we just like point out that it, it it he doesn't hang out? <laughs> no, I mean with, like online with and stuff. Yeah, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, not not online. He doesn't hang out with the tweens. He run, he helps the market the website for the tweens. He's paid to hang out with tweens, is what you're trying to say. I, okay, so let's set the record straight. So, <laughs> officially, let's, I, just, I, let's I, talk I, about that pumpkin. I'm all idea. about keeping girls safe online, authenticating okay. the twin girl experience, and you know, giving them self esteem and keeping all the, the bull crap in the world that that hits them. Okay, now that's the for real thing. So now we can joke about it. And yeah, I hang out with twins all day. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the envy of everyone, right? Awesome. Thank you very I, much for joining us. Chachi's on I, the couch. Yes, I'm back. He's doing stuff. Yeah. There's stuff rolling. Yeah. Chachi says dot net. Yeah, Chachi says dot net. And, um, and he's back with us. Yeah, I'm back. You, I, I was exhausted. You hit last the wall week. after the Comic Con. Yeah. Yes, that's all right. I, after, you're, you're with us in spirit, and we yeah. have a report from you this week. Yeah, after after the Comic Con, I I we we got back Monday night at eight. Yeah. I went home. I went to bed at like nine. I woke up still exhausted from the four days of walking. This is an epic shot of you, by the way. I <laughs> I, uh, I went back to work, which was a huge mistake. I got home from work. Probably five o'clock. By six o'clock, I was out in my recliner. Like I, I was just dead. So that's all right. But I'm back. That's all right. We're, and like I said, this is Awesome Cast. You can uh, find out more about us over at awesomecast.com. We can find out past episodes and all that jazz right there. And uh, hey, we like to hear from you guys. Contact at awesomecast.com if you have any news, comments, or whatnot to send our way. We'd like to read them on the air. Also, uh, give us a call at 724-258-CAST, 724-252-2278. And you can find us at all the hotspots, iTunes, uh, Mediafly, uh, Blip TV on your Roku player. I know a lot of you check us out there. Um, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, we got uh, some fun stuff from Twitter this week. Uh, Riz IUP, who's been on uh, some recent episodes, uh, he sent us a video, uh, or not a video, a, uh, a still uh, off of Facebook, which he just responded as lies. Uh, somebody said Nebraska is magical. Speaking of Nebraska. Speaking of Nebraska. So, so uh, Chachi Plays is coming up. Mm -hmm. Like We started mm -hmm. the ball rolling on that planning. 
and uh, we got all three, uh, all three major factors booked. Mm -hmm. Like they're set to go, mm -hmm. and so I've been having fun with the announcement of these three major pieces of the puzzle. Did you make the announcement? No. Um, I'm trying to decide on whether to do it Friday or Monday. The announcement has been... Yeah, well, it, it, we'll, we'll show you in a second here. But, um... So... I, I've been leaving, like, hints and stuff, and, like... Basically just screwing with everyone on Twitter and Facebook who want to know when the event's going to be and who the beneficiaries are. You got the already, console, right? What's that? Got the console on it, G Center? No, actually, I've already announced the place. Um, it's going to be at Toonzium. Oh. But, um, so I've been messing with people and leaving, like, funny ass comments on uh, Twitter and Facebook. And so last night I went to the Chachi Plays for Kids uh, Facebook page and I made a comment. And the first person to like the comment was from Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which goes against everything we've ever said on the show about Nebraska. Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think there was also a pumpkin on our page. Uh, and yeah. also, uh, here's, here's the press release. Uh, <laughs> the re For the record. The fully redacted press release. <laughs> For the record, that really was the press release. It is the press like, release. That is the up-to-date press release, and I spent the time, and I went in and blacked out everything. How'd you do it? Paint. Paint. Microsoft Paint. <laughs> well, Good work. I he's, a, he's ahead of the technology. I, I didn't. Wow. The chat room just blew up with racist. And... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but, um. Whoa. Anyhow. Okay. Yeah, we'll take Not care of that. Not cool. And so, uh. We'll take care of that. There yeah. Afterwards, I realized that I probably should have used our, our document software tool. That's and like just you put... work at a law firm yeah. that does this every day. Yeah, like I have the tools <laughs> to put redacted all over that document, and I just dropped it so but uh yeah that's coming friday there you go or monday good good so chachiplays.com uh yep. for for the up-to-date information and we do have to update the website yes. uh we had a submitted story here um uh from funky dung i thought it'd be interesting because you know we're going to be talking a lot of the, about this kind of stuff this week i guess uh i thought this was kind of funny uh to this baby a magazine is a broken ipod Oh, I saw I, that. I didn't even know that was in the show notes. And I, I, saw I just put it in this afternoon. Uh, here's the video playing. So there's the baby playing with an iPad, you know, as I do, you know, and with the magazine. And uh, I don't know. I think there's some audio here. But um, yeah, yeah. Trying to touch it, trying to tear it apart. But, you know, babies are very tactile. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, th this is kind of. This is kind of like, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the point where kids are growing up with this technology and this kind of interface. Yeah, uh, it's, that, it's that generational learning thing I'm always talking about, how, like, we look at new technology in, you know, we, we grew up on old CRTs with mice and keyboard. Like, what happens when kids grow up with nothing but touchscreens and they grow up with things like Netflix and being able to watch whatever they want whenever they want? The idea of TV sounds archaic, then. Mm -hmm. I, it was actually funny because well we were messing we were actually messing around with this uh, there was a certain website that had a really bad like 18 megabyte image file that was loading like slow on my FiOS and I'm like wow this is like and forget the reference for like downloading porn in 1996 on a dial up oh that was uh, so hard then I, <laughs> then, I <laughs> then I realized the kid in the chat room who just started college doesn't know what that was like because he was three does not know what it was like to get whatever you needed. <laughs> to, get, to get whatever you needed online, any sort of media, uh, scrolling down your screen as it downloaded bit by bit. Yeah, um, yeah it's a kid, kids these days stuff. Don't know. World kids the these internet. days kids, do not respect. Kids these days. In my day, we had a green screened Apple IIe that I learned to type on. And in my day, you downloaded video clips 10 seconds at a time. <laughs> And they were like postage stamp size and everything. Uh, yes. uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know. He's like, he, we have to adapt to this and, and realize that people don't know how it was. I actually spent the last couple of days, I uh, I threw in Netflix mostly because everything I have with Steve Jobs. I wanted to watch Triumph of the Nerds again, 
which basically stops after Windows 95 is released and Microsoft is on top of the world. And it really <laughs> goes through IBM and Apple and Microsoft and how different it was. And just thinking back when I started with computers in 1993 with a 486. <laughs> wow. you Sonic, know? Sonic Screwdriver in the chat room says the download manager was the greatest invention ever in 1998. Oh, yeah. What was it? Get right was the thing we used? That yes, would resume? Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's Get Right, and then it was like built into Netscape Navigator or Communicator. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Netscape Navigator is the best ever. <laughs> Norm, do you have a – what do you think about that? You're, you're kind of dealing with this kind of age range. Is it is it is it weird? Are there, are there like kids that don't that, – that you deal with that just don't have their perspective you do? Well, absolutely. But uh, I – you know, I think – I don't know that I, I've never done a study on it specifically. There, are, a lot of them are using mobile devices to access the site itself. Interesting. And what's interesting in terms of, I think, in terms of more of use, usability. You know, I think when you're a kid, if something's broken, especially with the web or a digital interface, you just use it. You don't realize that it's bad or it's broken or whatever. You just kind of deal with it and figure it out. Which, um, you yeah. know, so I think that a lot of sites, kids' sites for kids are kind of bad. And they just don't know that design should be better. So I, that's the best uh, answer I have in that regard. But, uh, I mean, you used it. You know, you used it to download your uh, mature content uh, back in the day. And, you know, you figured it out, obviously. So Hey, when you're 16 and you have the whole World Wide Web, you know. Um, Two things. What, what's that? Um, first off, they still have the feature in Microsoft Office that I call the, uh, the Doogie Hauser effect. Where you can turn... <laughs> You can turn the background of your Word document blue. Okay. With white text. That's awesome. Yeah. In like Word today, like yes. what was it, version 2011 or yeah. something? That's still an option you can use. Okay. So when I get bored and I have to type something up, I'll, I'll turn on the Doogie Howser effect. And then put the music on the backwards yep. and then uh, speak everything you type to yourself? Exactly. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> Sonic added. Uh, when you would cuss your friends out for calling you and getting kicked offline by the call waiting. <laughs> you know, I had, you know, my parents really, really luckily supported my technology. We got a second phone line specifically for the Internet, which is mostly me using it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those were the days. Yeah. And, and some people will never know. Just like I don't know what it's like to. Well, no, I did learn DOS prompts. Yeah. 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 Sure. Oh, reminiscing. <clears throat> reminiscing. So, um. So I mentioned if anybody uh, read any good books this week, we we actually talked about one uh, one a little bit in the pre-show. But the Steve Bog Steve Jobs book <laughs> came out yesterday. <laughs> the um, Steve Boggs book, preceded by a sixty-minute special. Ooh, yeah. Actually, he's all over us. It looks like he was on uh, GMA the next day. Mostly more of the family photos that they were sharing on the I iPad. I think did you, did ever did anybody watch this other than me? No, just you. Am I all alone? Am I all alone? Yeah. Sorry, I watched New Orleans destroy Indiana. <laughs> um, oh, that game was a mess. Sorry. <laughs> That's a different show. Yeah, I know. Um, but a lot came out, a lot of the revelations, you know, a lot of stuff we've been hearing over the last week. I guess New York Times, I think it was, that released the first quotes from it. Uh, basically, basically, you know, establishing Steve Jobs was kind of an asshole. Um, uh, I'm sorry, was that ever a question? <laughs> Well, you know, when he when he first died, there was a lot of, you know, Steve Jobs, he did this and this and and, you know, they played the Stanford speech and it was all yay Steve Jobs. And now um, this book is apparently more of a full kind of perspective of him. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when go, hmm. go ahead. So, <laughs> uh, I feel like a lot of people. Uh, what are you laughing at, Chachi? Your inability to word what you want to say. To word what I want to say. <laughs> yeah. um, hi, Dr. Nick in the chat room. So easily distracted. <laughs> anyway, uh, I feel like when people say that Steve Jobs is like mean or he was uh, this or that or whatever words that I don't want sort of have to edit out later. <laughs> like, what do you expect the CEO of uh, one of the largest companies in the world to be exactly like, do you want him to be like your grandpa and be like everything's okay because that's not how you make money exactly mm -hmm. like he had an opinion and he was happy to express it and that's just that's that's the thing like mm -hmm. if he was not if he, if steve jobs was a nice guy like a completely just passive nice guy apple would not exist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I listened to mac break weekly which was like today which was like a, a big dissection dissection of just steve jobs on the other side of things you know, which is funny since we had the same thing, like the positive 
one a right. few weeks ago. Well, you I know? mean, I mean and that, Steve that's Jobs the cycle did what he had to do. He did a lot, you know, and there's a lot of perspective <laughs> of, you know, everything we have. How much are we operating here in the studio uh, based on what he did, you know, or, or inspired or however you want to look at it. Um, but, Listen, yeah, everyone thinks lions are mean when they take down a gazelle, but... They're doing what they need to do. Mm-hmm. That's that is a wow. strangely perfect metaphor you just. Wow. Did. So I mean, yeah. I, if he had to be an arse in order to, uh, <laughs> an arse. Yeah, an arse. it's okay, you everybody. everybody. An it's that. British. What's that? It's okay. <laughs> so what I suggest you guys do is get a copy of the book, you know, peruse it, and then invite Cindy Klosky back on oh, yeah. to talk about her experience because she actually worked with him. Really? This I didn't oh, know. Yeah, she yeah. she worked for Next, and she worked with him for a couple of years. She wrote – the day he passed away, she wrote a blog post about him the first time she met him and working with him. She was a technical writer for Next, and she was only there for a little bit. But, um, yeah, she met him. Definitely. I, I do uh, I do plan in the next few days to get the audio book because I don't like reading. <laughs> um, but uh, it's 25 hours on a bridge. So, well, I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's going to be a one good, of the good best, listen. One of the best blog posts I read – Post death, uh, was uh, a negative like connotation blog post. Like it pointed out all the bad stuff, yeah, and the stuff that he did to upset people. Mm-hmm. And one of the things they pointed out was uh, after Apple bought Next and he was brought back on as CEO, um, he was down in the workshop and saw a prototype for the Mac that had the handle. Mm-hmm. and purposely took it on because he liked the idea even though the rest of the company had laughed at it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Steve Jobs did what Steve Jobs had to do. Yeah, yeah, he was very opinionated, and that's shown through. And, and, and uh, but, but you know what? There was a wishy-washiness that you didn't see with Apple that you see with, like, Hewlett Packard. Yeah. You know, like, you know, recent events with something like Hewlett Packard or Netflix, you know. That's very apologetic. It was very na- take no prisoners, unless they did screw up, and they, they were very awesome. Well, look at too. Pirates of Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. I mean, even that loosely documents him splitting the company into two parts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for one of the products. What was uh, it? Was Macintosh? It yeah. was the, it, 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 well, and uh, I started reading uh, Macintosh way uh, that guy Kawasaki released the PDF of because he got the rights back, um, and and um, it's. Uh, yeah, it was like the best of the best. He pulled over and said, let's get the Macintosh done. Right. No questions asked. And uh, one of the things I think from the 60 Minutes uh, uh, you know, program was about how he – we talked talk about the reality distortion field with Apple. Um, he would say, you know, I, this needs done within this period. Say that that's impossible. We can't write that much code in that time. And it would get done, you know, because he pushed people. You know, is he the is he the best manager for what got accomplished or is he the worst manager for having to deal with them? And that's the real question. I guess it depends on how you dealt with them as 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 an employee. Right. So um, but, the, yeah, there's a whole bunch going on about that. It was, it was a, a pretty crazy. You know, the, the 60 minutes was a, a really interesting piece on him. A lot of sound bites from recordings, um, you know, obviously not originally intended for air because they were just like recordings of him with you know the the author um but it's a really interesting uh uh, look at it so all right moving on and on the eve of or actually the same day of the 10 year anniversary of the ipad ipod they they planned it that way they planned it that way yeah the whole thing was planned out well i mean he did uh he did pass the day after the announcement for the iphone for us yeah yeah it's (laughs) if he held on first. Even in his passing, it's a well-timed with yeah. uh, product launches. Right. Um, <laughs> that shows his dedication, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what more to say about that one. But, no, I, I mean, the iPod really uh, – uh, I, I heard iTunes it was until two years later. For really? uh, Yeah, that they were, they were talking about it. And they said iTunes didn't launch until two years later. So, I mean, I, iPod was straight up. What did you use then? Apparently an app. Really? Are you sure it wasn't the iTunes store? I'm pretty sure I was using iTunes before an iPod came out. Yeah, there was no way to sync an iPod without iTunes. That was a thing. Oh, we'll, we'll look it up. Uh, Sound Jam MP, developed by a bunch of people, uh, and released in 1999, was re- renamed to iTunes when Apple purchased it in 2000. 
in 2000. Okay. 2000. Okay, then somebody on some other show had some bad information. I back. There you go. My bad, because I say it repeatedly. Well, we do research and on you this say show. Things, not without blindly trusting sources first. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, other than that, did, did anybody follow the Galaxy Nexus announcement and ice cream sandwich? Nope. The what? No, no, nobody. Nope. nope. The uh, <coughs> the uh, the the new Nexus, which you know, of course, is uh, uh, Google's. Um, you know, pretty much the 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 phone we want all of you to emulate. Yeah. Um, recording in 1080p, ice cream sandwich uh, is more better made for a tablet, and uh, as NFC Android Beam which I heard people uh, attributing it to uh, old palm beaming back in the day. Um, The camera's been revamped, and there's face unlock. I think I was telling you about this, Chachi, Uh, which didn't work in demo. Yeah. Didn't the zoom beam, too? Uh, Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could could beam music to your friends or whatever. Well, that apparently it's in the operating system, so... Uh, here's a little bit. Here's a little bit of the desktop. This is what it looks like on a tablet, which just looks like a desktop computer to yeah. me. I mean, it doesn't feel tablety from what I'm seeing. Uh, here's a little bit of video, maybe here if it loads. Um, but uh, I mean, it is it, you know, like coming up right after the iPhone, is is this really something that sticks out for people, or is it more catch up on their end? I'm saying it's going to fall flat. You think so? Or is it the- I mean, it's like the the nerds who actually know what ice cream sandwich means. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, they're excited, but uh, sorry, the nerds don't pay the bills. So, that's right. That's about it. Well, somebody's yeah. the early adopters. Somebody's buying them. Is yeah. there like a report on CSNBC about how people are excited about ice cream sandwich? Uh, no, most of the stuff I'm seeing is from uh, Gadget and Gadget. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, so Chachi's not excited about this. You're not. Well, you should be getting this on your phone eventually. Yeah, eventually. Mm -hmm. But who knows when. Mm -hmm. So I get excited when... I don't know when I'm going to get it on my device. And that's kind of... Nor do I even know if I want it on my device. And that's kind of the big kicker for for devices like these. Like, Well, they have their 18-month dedication to updating platforms. But I don't think, you know, they have to make sure it's updated within 18 months. How long does it take for them to update your phone right. when this is finally released right you know of course you can get it now and root your phone and put it on but do you want to no so that's just a waste of time <laughs> is it no seriously I, I don't do anything that would warrant me rooting my phone mm-hmm. so why waste the time and speaking plus, of phones uh i have a pro tip wow yeah you're just gonna step on me like that uh, so did you have a continued thought? I thought you were kind of done complaining about how you didn't Go want ahead. it. Go ahead. Okay. Doc Brown. Uh, <laughs> what'd you call me? Doc Brown. <laughs> Doc Brown. That's fine. Uh, so my phone is currently sick because of iOS 5. I have uh, an iPhone 4 and my battery life has gone to like... Now, okay, let's see how this is. This is, this is something... Uh, and Nor, have you been having that issue with yours? I haven't yet, no. Well, everybody should see like a slight decrease in battery life, but you shouldn't see your phone go from lasting for like a day and a half to lasting four hours, your which phone, is my problem. Your phone lasts like a day and a half. My <laughs> yeah, my iPhone four lasts like a day and a half wow. without a charge. Uh, I do know when I uh, installed Family Map, I lost like fifty percent battery like out of nowhere, and yeah. I immediately uninstalled it. A lot um, of folks have uh, have updated to iOS 5 and they've seen like this incredible, like not just, oh, uh, my GPS chip is looking at things, mm-hmm. but like a really terrible uh, battery life. And from some digging around on the internet today, I discovered this thing and put it on the camera thing. Okay. What this is that? thing. Is that processing? What's that? That's your CPU usage on your phone? Yes. What? And this is like an app that's not like rooting your phone or anything like that. Correct. It's in the uh, it's in the app store. It's ninety nine cents. I don't know who makes it, but it's called like Activity Monitor or something. Super useful for when you can't figure out why your phone is like a uh, really hot, like it's being used all the time, or b your stuff is being uh, your battery is just completely wasted. So I got this thing, which is telling me that data access and report crash is popping up every like six minutes, which means that there is something on my phone that's causing a crash loop. Oh, wow. So here's your pro tip right here. Um, 
haven't quite figured out exactly what uh, what is causing that crash. There's word that it can be like a corrupted contact yeah. from an, uh, an iCloud import. What's the uh, name of the app again? Uh, Activity Monitor. Oh, just like on the uh, yeah on the yeah, Mac. Same thing. Okay. Are you still under warranty with your phone? With my phone. Because uh, if you take it in the apps Apple Store, they may just swap it out. I mean, I had a button contact start to go on my iPhone four. And um, I just brought in to see if they could take a look at it or clean it. And they were just like, you know what? We're just going to give you a brand new phone right out of the box. And they swapped it out. And I didn't. It was the, within a year or something. The well, it, sounds warranty, like it's so. more of a, it sounds like it's more of a software issue. With yeah, this is this is definitely yeah. a software issue, not a hardware issue at all. Yeah. Which is oh, just, well, I thought you were just saying that you might have. I, I, you know, now that you said it, I feel like I do have maybe a little bit of a, of a battery drain, maybe slightly less, but I charge mine at the end of the day when I'm sleeping, so I don't have, I've never, I never really go more than one day without a charge anyway, so uh, I, I yeah, haven't I used to do that, and my problem really is affecting. now I can't go more than like five or six hours without plugging it in. Really? Yeah, so that's why I have to figure out what this crash loop is all about. And it could be, it could be some some uh, uh, app you have running on there too, right? Yeah, tried that, nope. No? No? Uh, it, <laughs> wow. If you kill all of the apps, it still crashes every like thirty seconds, and it, it'll, it's only happening in the like the crash reporter thing. It's just basically uh, something is crashing. It tries to create a log, and then something goes wrong. So I might just wipe my phone clean. And stuff. I don't because I had like beta updates or like beta restores and all that. So I might just go back. To that. And the iPhone anyway. just became what the Android is. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd say uh, just do a hard reinstall. That should probably fix your. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's nice, but it does that thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does that. It does that. That I'm crashing all the time thing, yeah. and screams at me in the CPU. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what else is happening? What else is happening here? Uh, let me see if there's anything else that was actually interesting from uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. I mean, they're pushing the camera. There was actually a comparison video here of the uh, Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Uh, cameras, which you know, I mean, I'm sorry, the cameras have been notoriously bad on uh, on on phones. Like I know, yeah. Chachi, your video hasn't been really that great. No, coming off of that thing, people don't buy my phone for cameras. No, no, no. I, and I guess some of the dro- the higher end droids have been good. Like here's a video of the Nexus. Uh, here's a, here's a video of the Nexus was uh, 1080p, which is what the iPhone is is boasting too. And, uh, of course, I haven't been able to see it actually at 1080p because I don't have a computer. I think I'll run it. Uh, but, but it looks pretty decent. Like, that's that's definitely uh, – you see a little bit of the wobble there that you're used to on the phones. So, um, but really – Nothing th- like the video from an iPhone 4S, which is being compared to the video from a Canon 5D Mark II. Just saying. How is that going? How, how oh, are it's those, so I, good. I it makes me too, angry. Really? I haven't seen too many comparison videos yet. <laughs> I, I it really, it, there to. really is. There's quite a few videos that do side by side comparison of the iPhone 4S camera to um, a Canon 5D Mark II, which you know is 1080p uh, and super nice. And uh, I've been kind of lusting over the 5D Mark II for a while, but the like, there's no ghosting, there's no shutter lag, there's no nothing between the two. The, basically, if you just want to make a really nice looking video, iPhone 4S will do it. Like it's gotten far enough that people are now making like music videos and stuff yeah. using the iPhone 4S camera. Well, people were kind of doing that a little bit um, with the iPhone 4. Right? Yeah, yeah, but now it doesn't suck. <laughs> and there was that story that even the, uh, the the Avengers trailer was using uh, the iPhone 4 for a certain shot. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the here's the video here actually. Yeah, yeah, there you um, go. And it's a little it's a little dark. I don't know if that's going to come up too great. Uh, wow, I didn't. That looks pretty yeah. decent, actually. <laughs> looks pretty good, right? Uh-huh. And he uh, he provides some traffic shots as well. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying that the 4S is a replacement for the 5D Mark II. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't get, uh, you know, your lenses and, and a yeah. lot more and, software control and, don't and judge the formatting from you, and all that good stuff. Yeah, and don't uh, don't judge from what you're seeing uh, on our video. Obviously, this is being shot in 1080 and everything on yeah, a, on a feed feed, and, uh, and we're definitely down converting. But you can see the comparison. You can see the color depth a little bit. Uh, yeah. And there the isn't like feed. if you were to guess like what the difference would be like you'd be like oh well there would be there should be some compression junk in the iPhone 4 one uh, you should see more ghosting you should have it ha- see it having uh, a lot of difficulty adjusting with sudden light changes mm-hmm. you don't see any of that yeah I mean you see some coloration you know um, like but, but it's interesting because like the, the other shot the sky seemed bluer this shot the sky seems bluer over here 
Um, yeah. It's it's really uh, comparable, actually. Like you know, my untrained eye, I'm preferring the iPhone S look. Right. So um, wow, that's the, the I'm very excited for my new phone now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I actually wrote a little bit on my post because I did my what did I learn from the New York Comic Con and I considered, you know, what if you take an iPhone 4S with like something like an Al- Ali Bubo that puts a bigger lens on it. And this is this is unassisted, right? Like this doesn't have like a DSL, you know, a, No, a there's lens nothing on it. special this on that iPhone. This is straight up, this is what the phone looks like and it's right next to a Canon 5D. <laughs> That's pretty tremendous. And I, and I wonder if I even need an Ali at that point. So, I mean, obviously for audio, I'm going to need the outputs and everything, but... Um, How soon until all of Awesome Cast is streaming iOS, uh, or I'm sorry, iPhone for us? Um, I don't know about that because you can't do an output real easy from them that I'm aware of. Um, although they are doing that on the iPad. Uh, I, I seen a story uh, about a month ago where they were putting, um, apparently when in filmmaking, they have a mm-hmm. system where you can hook it up to a camera. So you're looking directly, kind of like how you do a teleprompter with a mirror, but you're looking at the face. So you're interviewing the person face to face to get that kind of eye contact feel to it, depending on what you're doing. Um, they, they couldn't afford because it was for a school project uh, to get one of those systems. So they got two iPad 2s with FaceTime, put it in a little teleprompter mirror like like, uh, you know, we've talked about for on Sung Chachi um, and uh, and just use that for, for a lot cheaper, you know. Um, so, so, I mean, there's, yeah, well, actually, there you go. FaceTime. We just we just put that through to everything. Right. Um, but I, I would like to see somebody do a podcast studio that's all, all iOS. That could be interesting. So. Well, can't you Skype? Can you video Skype on an iPhone? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can. On a, 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 you know, iPhone 4 and up. So even iPod Touches. That could be interesting. So, um, And, then, you know, yeah, I was looking at, you know, we, we drug that big camera around for four days trying to get footage. You did. I did. Yes. I did. Um, and it would be nice to have an alternative. I saw a few people with some, I think I actually saw an alley go around. There, there was, there was some weird setups there. (laughs) It was. Like, I swear the dude had one that was Mm. made out of silver spray painted cardboard. What? Like a, like a harness. A harness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was just weird looking. Like. The, the, he had a frame for his backpack, mm-hmm. which would, looked like the same thing. And then he had, like, this arm coming up over his shoulder with a, a what are they, DRL? D- DSLR? Yeah, DSLR camera sitting within, like, this silver frame thing. And it seriously looked like it was made of cardboard, but it couldn't have been because it was holding up the camera and everything else. You know, you'd be surprised. But, I mean, it was... <laughs> like, I once saw a, a jib crane that uh, they built on, on Film Riot out of wood. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the stuff you saw was just crazy. And we saw, what, monopods? We saw, like, like uh, steady cams over, over the shoulder steady cams. Um, we saw every line of setup possible yeah from really really good to really really bad the kids with the kids with a flip cam with a press pass yes like with this this we seriously saw this um it it was it was it was an interesting demonstration although as i mentioned the panasonics like the two models panasonics that i have um were what i saw the most of as far as cameras (laughs) right so um but yeah it would be it'd definitely be nice to be a little more mobile especially when it gets completely full on the on the third and fourth day over the weekend yeah because that got really bad um all right let's see what else we got here guys um netflix holy crap <laughs> uh well, they they announced their their earnings and uh what were they what, what was those numbers we were talking about those before the show they're down eight hundred thousand. they're down some huge number mm-hmm. of subscribers like it's not far off from a million but it's Netflix, so that's really just a few drops in the bucket. Uh, according to their earnings call, they were um, said this isn't going to be a problem because they're opening in London and Ireland. Or, I'm sorry, the <coughs> England, the United Kingdom, and Ireland. Right. Uh, uh, coming up here, so they're expecting to get more subscribers that way. Um, so, I mean, is is this irrational? All these people dropping off of here, or, or well, look at what they did. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not really a surprise. I mean, this whole Quickster disaster, mm-hmm. and they're separating the price scan. I mean, this was all just 
waiting to happen anyhow. I, I, I still think the, the price change would have blown over if Quickster didn't happen. Yeah, probably. Like everybody would be over it by now, but that Quickster thing was was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it kind of it it uh, put a little salt in the wound, and uh, also the I was just looking at their their like sales numbers. Uh, sales and rentals of packaged DVDs and Blu-ray just plunged twenty percent the first quarter of two thousand eleven. So that probably had something to do with it too. Mm-hmm. And the sell through of package discs sell twenty percent to 2.7 2.07 billion dollars with more money spent on subscription rentals than in-store rentals yeah uh so i mean what's it? thanks for the note on there I, I presume you put that on there rob what did i put on what still sucks yeah yeah i put that on there yeah although i have been using it quite a bit more i've re- i finished the it crowd okay <clears throat> so i've been watching 30 rock yeah because I, I heard that was funny like three years ago <laughs> <laughs> so i've uh i've watched uh i've watched like 23 episodes over the last two weeks i think wow there you but go but to That's... be fair it's a 20 minute long episode yeah there you go there you go but i am you know i'm finally getting and... my seven dollars a month worth or whatever it is yeah well, compared I... to what you would have gone for those dvd subscriptions yeah I, I blew through all the office on netflix really quick i just started in uh deep space nine i didn't watch the beginning of that series i'm back to power rangers You're back to power rangers yeah yeah i heard you complaining about power rangers and the white ranger taking over right yeah it's well not... uh, i'm watching the ep- uh, i'm on the episode where they create the white ranger mm-hmm. which means lord on is throwing together all this magic power and stuff for this new power ranger who just shows up and takes over like he's the boss because he's white <laughs> there's a message there there's definitely what? a message there Look at, but wasn't look at, the White Ranger played by an African American man? Yes. Uh, in no. later in later series, yes. But originally he was a white guy. But I, I mean, look at the whole show. It was all just racism. Yeah, it's true. That so is true. I mean, but yeah, the dude shows up. He's in charge now. Woohoo! Because he carries a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And uh, what did I have here? Oh, there's an interesting article. Is Infinity Blade unethical? What is what is Infinity Blade? Infinity Blade is so. the, the game, the big game they put on the iPhone, iPad from uh, Epic uh, Games. Oh the, wow, uh, that the, thing, the, yeah. the Unreal thing. Well, you go in there; it's a six dollar game, right? You know, and I've been playing it. Uh, but then there's the upgrades. Uh, well, this article is by another developer. You know, he calls it, Infinity Blade is a form of extortion uh, because they get you into it. They have a uh, a checklist mechanic which gets people, you know grinding through a game like that uh but then you get to a point where you can buy upgrades you can either work through and get the upgrades or you can just buy to progress in the game no it's not extortion it's not unethical well even even the other quest has the, been doing that for years even the article writer said that this, this guy had him in his argument until he got to the extortion part um well no yeah, and actually this is too. by this is by adam saltzman the creator of cannibal and gravity hook hd um uh, on the iOS, of course. Um, so, I mean, you, you Are you going to let me finish you, this you time? Seen, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and Sony has been doing this this model for years with EverQuest 2. Okay. EverQuest 2 is a completely free game to play unless you want to buy upgrades. Upgrades as in the level packs or upgrades as in a weapon? Weapons. Okay, so they, yeah. they're doing them in, in a lot of a lot of stuff on weapons, on powers. Mobile. Yeah, I mean, a lot anything. of the mobile stuff is like this too, where you you buy uh, Farmville. Isn't Farmville like this? Yeah, where you can buy updates to that. Godfinger, exactly. Which I think a lot of us had an addiction to for a it's, while there. It's not um, a new. Yeah, it's but, not a new pricing it, strategy. But is it unethical? No. To to do this, the the basic game is free. You don't have to buy anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or even in this case, you're paying six dollars and you can get more out of the game supposedly by doing that. Or you can just play the game as is and exactly. earn it. Uh, NBA normally. Jam, NBA Jam on my iPhone, I believe, is the same way where I could play through and unlock all the teams, or I can just pay ninety nine cents for a four pack. Right. So you're lazy. <laughs> you're you're paying to yeah. be lazy. Exactly. You're and maybe getting less out of the game. Right. So I mean, no extortion, unethical, no. No, no. What do you guys think? Yeah, Doc Brown. What do you think? I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Norm. Norm. Well, yeah, I think it's just uh, the trend. I mean, it's how these companies are trying to make money. They're giving you a free 
a free game. And actually, I was doing some research with some iPhone app companies this month, and they're finding that they're making a better profit when they have in-game buys versus uh, pay to get the game. So, you know, you've got to look at it as a business perspective. So, you know, if they'll give you the game for free or for 99 cents and then put in-app purchases, they're, I don't know, that's doing better. So, yeah, you are, like we said, Mike, you know, you get into the game, you get hooked on something, and then you want to unlock more levels or go forward. The thing that I don't like is when they, they, you have to just like, you get to a certain point in the game. It's like, okay, well now you have to pay $4. Just continue period. I think that's unethical, Mm -hmm. but you know, something where it's like, you could pay to unlock this awesome sword, or you could just play the game and get this sword because you earned it. You know, I think that that, that can separate the, the person who just wants to play the game with the best weapon and not worry about it. There's people out there, or you have the people who are purists. You can, you know, you have a different experience, and, and it caters to what type of gamer you are a little bit more. I, I want to go back to where you talked about where you get to a part of the game and you buy the rest of it. Isn't isn't that the same as the shareware model that uh, Doom and Wolfenstein 3D made so famous years ago? Because yes. I've seen that before too. Yeah, where, War, where Warcraft you, does that. What, Warcraft does. Yeah, well, wow, no, Wow okay. does that. Okay. You uh, now you get to you can download the game for free. Mm-hmm. Play up to level twenty, mm-hmm. and then you pay the, the monthly latest, fee. Uh, the latest Katamari game uh, that was released exclusively on iOS does this. They give you the first level uh, limited, and then you it's an in app purchase to buy like four more levels. Right. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say. I mean, how many free games in the uh, in the app store are there that you like? There is like the light version. Yeah, yeah, right. And then they're like, here's two levels of the exact same game that you would get if you buy it, but here's only two levels of a 15 level thing. If you want more, buy the thing. Then there's a big ad, and otherwise you just keep playing the same two levels over and over again. But then there's the experience like we had, uh, you know, a couple has had with Godfinger, where it's like, well, we're playing through and we're just grinding. And that's it. Mm. And yep. we're not putting any more money into it. We're not really getting much else. Why am I doing this? Right. Yeah. Um, well, I bu- there was a game. I-, I can understand the light version. I think the light isn't understood. Like, you're getting a demo of this game. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. If, if you pay for a game, if you pay 99 cents, and then you have to pay $4 after a couple of levels. But that was that happened with the game I was playing. And I, and I didn't realize I was actually buying it. So that pissed me off even more. Okay. And, uh, you know, so it happened. Uh, but... Like I, you know, in the chat room, you know, Diablo Two, you could buy weapons on eBay. Yeah, that was that's kind of the same thing, except it's not an app. Yeah, I played a lot that, of Diablo that's Two, kind of, and I earned a lot of weapons, so I can it, respect it. Isn't the eBay selling though outside of the realm of what the game does? Like, like Blizzard isn't selling stuff on eBay. Right. It's it's definitely third party interactions. Yeah, because I think World of Warcraft does. There's something similar, and they were trying to crack down, like gold farming and everything like that. Um, Hey, job build a company around that. Touch change. What? Just saying. What was it? Ja, he, he built a company called Couch Change. It was built mm-hmm. on collecting extra money, extra gold in World of Warcraft and turning that into some sort of real world comp, comp, compensation. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm learning a I'm lot not about sure people exactly how it worked, but that's what, that was the business model. I, I'm learning a lot about people I thought I knew tonight. Um, <laughs> Wow. Uh, so I, yeah, gold farming is a really big thing now in oh yeah, in oh, Warcraft. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I think there was there was a uh, specials. Uh, the, that Warcraft uh, documentary that was on Netflix, I think, had talked about that. There's a Warcraft documentary there's, on there's Netflix. A, there's like a, a MMO uh, documentary. I forget what it was called. I, I watched it ages ago. Yeah. Um, but it talked about like we, people being obsessed with it and not sharing for days and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then you see something on something like Law and Order SVU, and you're just kind of like, oh, my God. Well, no, the, law, the no, thing on Law and Order not... that <laughs> happened. Which one, are, now, which one are you referring to? I'm talking about the one where they walked in on the couple that had been playing uh, some game for days and neglected their kid. And Well, that happens well, that, every day. That actually yeah. happened. Yeah. But um, there was a guy in China or one of the Asian countries that played for 72 hours straight mm-hmm. gold farming and died playing. I, I didn't hear he was gold farming. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, that's what he was doing. He was gold farming and died. All right. Because <laughs> he forgot to eat. Well, from that gaming item, let's go to our uh, our, our, our special uh, report this week. Hi, guys. Chachi here at the New York Comic Con. It is Saturday, which is day three. The, the main showroom is packed, but we still were able to get in with Al from Demir, who's going to show us and talk to us about the game Shoot More Robots. You got the name of the game wrong. Oh, already? Yeah. Oh, Thanks, come on. No, 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 no. Thanks, we don't have to do it. Let's keep going. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and you know what? I've been looking forward to this, so the fact that I got the name wrong <laughs> is just sad. I'm sorry. It's shoot many robots. And you are the first person who has ever called it shoot more robots. Too. Well, many more. <laughs> just give me a hard time. Yeah. I kept saying all the robots. Shoot yeah. All robots. Yeah. 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 Listen, we thought we had the most memorable title ever, and it turns out we have one that can be swapped out in a hundred different ways. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, we need to shoot all the robots. That's absolutely so, true. Many is not enough. It should be all. Right. Shoot Many Robots is a, is a four-player co-op running gun. Uh, we wanted to bring back some of that. We wanted a game that was quick to pick up. You get three or four of your buddies together, open some beers, and shoot some robots. Uh, so it is a running gun, but it's 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 infused with dungeon crawl. So there's all sorts of loot for you to pick up. You can level your character up to 50, and then there's an end game with even more loot to get. Um, we're playing here with a level 41 character, um, and we've gone through and we've picked up a few guns from our from from our, our playing of the game. Uh, but there is much, 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 much more to buy. Uh, all of the loot is sort of lovingly handcrafted. Um, we've uh, we've added some fun little slogans. Who's got time to pull a pin when the machines can do it for you is the tagline for our grenade. I'm just choosing these at random. They're all absolutely brilliant. Rockets, the perfect plan B. That's the old Smokey. I'm going with the uh, Noming Missile Launcher, which uh, we don't have homing missiles. We have Noming Missiles, which shoot garden gnomes um, that are horrifically inaccurate. Uh, but we give you plenty of ammo, so the accuracy is really not all that important. Uh, so, but this isn't just, and we got hats, many, many hats to choose from. We got different sets of backpacks that give you different abilities. Uh, we've got backpacks that are useless, you might say. We have the baby carrier, babies plus one, which. Uh, there's an achievement with the baby carrier. Uh, uh, most of the items actually do something useful, but uh, this guy, I'm going to go into a little debug mode here so you guys get a good look at the baby carrier because you're taking video. Whoop, 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 sorry. I'm not very good at this. All right. There's, oh, we'll face, the, sorry. All right, no, no, it's fine. I got it, I got it. There we go. So baby carrier, babies plus one. Doesn't do anything. Uh, there's an achievement for it. All right, uh, and uh, we, we teamed up with the guys at Penny Arcade to put the fruit fucker in the game. Uh, and he has a custom animation, which is so wrong and yet so right. Wait, you gotta see the little slap. That's my favorite part. Here it is, yes. All right. Um, I'm going to go with the jetpack here. So all this gear uh, lets you build, in addition to being entertaining, it also lets you build a character class. So uh, you can team up with each other to have the guy who's going to be the sniper, who's going to move around quickly and pick guys off at range. The, you can definitely build the tank class, who's well-equipped with lots of beers. Beer is health in the game. Who's got plenty of health and plenty of beer to sort of carry the team forward. Uh, and uh, you can also change classes on the fly. Just put on a, set yourself up with a different outfit. Levels we two basic types of levels, the run and gun, which we're going to see in Steel Town here, and then survival mode, which we've got everybody playing over on four player here at the show. Uh, they uh, they have a different feel to them for sure. Survival plays kind of like Horde. This plays a little more like the, uh, the classic. So you do pretty well here. I got the fruit fucker who's going to give my uh, my all-American rifle uh, bullet penetration. So you can see the uh, the bullets are going through guys, which uh, lets them carry forward. I did. I mentioned that the fruit fucker adds penetration. You did. Okay. I mean, I guess you could maybe assume it, but use my gnoming missiles here to maybe clear the room a little bit, or just melt him. So I just picked up a crit power up, which is going to let me do. I'm running real slow. I must have geared myself with something funny. Uh, crits. Uh, 
do 2x damage. So when you've got this crit power up, you're doing double damage. We have uh, branching paths. So we're four player online. Uh, but as a result of that, unlike a lot of running guns, everybody has their own camera. So our running gun levels are a little bit more open. Uh, and there are different areas of the game to explore, different routes to. Oh my god, what have I done? Okay. Woo. Uh, so we're going to take one of the alternative paths down here. There's a bunch of these in the game, they're a little harder. Uh, and then there's better loot as a result. Uh, but as a four player team, you're going to want to split up to make sure you get all the robots to collect all the nuts, which is what I'm picking up along the way there, because that's the currency in the game. And everybody shares the nuts. Uh, and then you can use that to buy gear later on. So this is a new boss we're showing off at uh, Comic-Con. He's the Dirt Screw. He screws dirt. Oh god, sorry, wasn't paying attention. Um, so the game is huge. If you're, if you're a, I don't want to know how long it's going to take to pick up every piece of loot. Nobody's done that yet. But if you just want to play through the three difficulty modes, all of which have uh, different sets of adventures and missions, it took, takes our development team 27 hours. Uh, we did a really nice job with the matchmaking. So it's from the menu. It's really easy to invite your Xbox or your PlayStation party into the game, or your friends. Just say, "Come join me." If you're in the middle of a level and they join, next checkpoint, they pop right in. Uh, we have quick match, which runs really nice. If you're just like, find me people who are the same level and I want to shoot robots with randoms, so you can do that too. You can get a couple of your buddies in and then add one random. It's really, really nice. <laughs> uh, did you approach Penny Arcade for the Fruit Fucker? Yes. Or did they... We are huge Penny Arcade fans. Uh, we've known them for a long time. And uh, when we realized we, we could make as much loot as we did, we started thinking about ways we might incorporate some of our favorite uh, characters and websites into the game. And the Fruit Fucker is I know, it's my favorite Penny Arcade character. Uh, and so we asked them if we could put it in the game, and they were gracious enough to let us. So, whoops. All right, we're good. Are there any other... Uh... What other characters from other websites did you manage to sneak oh, in? Uh, well, we're uh, we're Destructoid fans, so we've got their mascot in there as a hat, um, and then the guys from Co-Optimus, We uh, we put one of the, we put a backpack with a little Co-Optimus thing in it, so it's cool. Were there any thoughts to put the uh, drunken Divix player into the game? Div. So, there was. We had to choose. I think the thing is, the uh, div is funny. The potential for great animation with the fruit fucker was, was too much to pass up. So, uh, this here is uh, the gas bag. This is another one of our bosses in the game. As the game levels up and, uh, and gets harder over time, this guy comes equipped with all sorts of different gear. Sometimes he's carrying a giant robot called the six-pack. Sometimes he's in this configuration shooting the basic bullets. Sometimes it's grenades. He's a, he's a different fight every time. And he's no match for my gnomes. No match for my gnomes. Uh, when does the game come out? Early next year. January, February, March. Something like that. Uh, store release or Xbox Live Arcade? Oh my goodness, how did we not say that? It's Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network, and PC download. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I went to <laughs> Alpha Lab uh, Innovation Works Demo Day mm -hmm. today. And uh, there actually are some interesting companies coming out of there. Um, a couple of medical companies. Uh, things medical track like track your own personal health was one with uh with an actual device that you plug in the bottom of your iphone and it keep tra keeps track of your vitals it seems like it's kind of works like the nike app does but it's a little bit more and then uh this thing that tracks your diabetes which was really interesting and it's kind of like a social network for people with diabetes and they can build a community but i think the the most uh the company that i felt has the most potential is called combine and they are doing tracking with um, manager people who manage property. Uh, and like, if you own like 200 units to 2,000 units, and you can keep track of the property and the maintenance mm -hmm. requests and that sort of thing, uh, the landlord can can manage that and, and parse out the work. And the tenants can. It's kind of like it's it's not a social network, but it, it kind of is. Uh, and it, it just looked really good. So. Awesome. Uh, that was Combine. So, anyways, that's my Alpha Lab innovation or yeah, demo day report. Awesome. And, and we've talked about a few great companies from uh, Alpha Lab. It's good to hear there's good stuff coming out this uh, this session too. Uh, well, the deadline is I think October Monday, October twenty first or thirty first. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, it's at uh, alpha lab alpha lab dot org for more 
uh, information. If you have a really keen idea and want to see it, they'll give you money to do it. Uh, right, and I was talking to Mike Wojcik today, and he said competition is heating up. So if you uh, if you want to get in, get your idea together and, and do it right. I Twixy, an Alpha Lab alumni. So there you go. Um, excellent. Cheers. Excellent. So, uh, well, that's all we got for this week, guys. And my nose just went away. Uh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, thanks, no. hey, thanks, Norm, for coming on and, as a yeah. pinch hitter this week. I Twixy.com. If you're a tween girl, go check it out. Or if you if you need here, I'll plug it for real. If you are trying to reach tweens or study tweens, that's also what we do. So um, we're all about. I uh, hope there's heavy screening. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what, no, what, <laughs> no, we're ser- I'm serious. So if you want, if your if your company needs to learn about tweens, I uh, I have the hookup. Yeah. So I'm going to be shameless about this from now on. If you guys bring me on the show, it'll, I'll always plug it. So. Which probably means I won't be on for a while, right? Yep, yep. You you you, you felt your quota. Um, no, no. I Twixie is great. Rebecca is great. That that uh, that heads that up over there, and uh, they're doing some really cool stuff over there. So uh, go check that out. Chachi is at chachisays.net. Keep an eye on chachiplays.com. There's plenty of interviews of you talking to important people at the New York Comic Con. Yep, at sorgatronmedia.com. There you go. Well, you talked to South Park. <laughs> I insulted South you Park. You insulted South Park. <laughs> yes. Told him, uh, is your game going to suck? Yeah. <laughs> First question. I tried to smooth that over as much as I could in the interview. <laughs> Why? <laughs> when you're when you when your company has a history of making crappy video games, that's true. The first thing you want to know is if their new video game is going to be crappy. And mind you, he's doing this right in front of like the the yeah five of the vice presidents of uh, South Park of, of Studios. South Park Studios. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that was, that was well, listen. Amazing. I mean, seriously, as a gamer. Mm-hmm. If you have a history of making crappy video games, the first thing I want to know is if you think this game is going to suck. One of them was the the head of the development company too. Right. <laughs> well, well, game. maybe. I mean, if they think it's going to suck cuz their their history is putting out crappy video games, which means mm. what they like is crappy video games. So you, well, you, no, you actually, really want to know is if no, they, they had the a good answer. game is going to suck. Yeah. They, 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 did, they, did, they did have a good answer for it. They said they didn't do games for 10 years, and this is why. They said that repeatedly. <laughs> yeah, no. This, yeah, they said that uh, it, it's the first video game that they've done in-house. Mm-hmm. So the chances of it sucking are slim. And also Voltron was pretty cool. The guy, yeah. the creative director from that was pretty awesome. Oh, he was on he was something. Great. He, was, he great. was hyped. He was he was yeah. he was running the uh the panel like like a game show host. It was crazy. Yeah. Um and uh we talked to Boy Wonder. Uh the film coming out is gonna be on Netflix soon. November eighth. Sorry had a limited release in New York City and Chicago. Yep. Uh, Ohio will be coming out this week. Uh, the guys have sent us a big pink envelope. <laughs> um, who else did we did I post up? Oh, dot com from Thirty Rock. Speaking of Thirty Rock, there, uh, Rob. What? Yeah, yeah. I ran into dot com and got to talk with him. It's up on SorgatronMedia dot com right now. If you want to check that out. What? And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also uh, going to make a cameo on the Wrestling Mayhem show. What? Yes. Tune in. Tune in tonight. Um. So, uh, hey, Rob, what's going Ooh. on? Watching a lot of Thirty Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Watching a lot of Thirty Rock, experimenting with hairstyles. Yes, uh, stacking Mac Minis. Um, so that was a sexy picture you gave. It me. was a sexy that was picture. A sexy picture you sent. Yeah. Out. I'm not I, a I Mac guy. I was actually guy. going to uh, invite you guys to the the studio party thing, not this Friday, but next Friday. But we, uh, as of Monday, like all of our gear, like everything we have, will be exiting the studio. <laughs> That's okay. I it's, it's all that's going okay. I got to work anyways. Uh, that's all right. Uh, uh, there's free beer, man. I might have to work, man. North Allegheny's kicking ass. Um, but <laughs> I got to make the money, man. Um, so, so, hey, yeah, Sork, what are you going to What am on? I going? I, what have I not got going on? Hey, I'm, I'm still awesome. recording for North Allegheny High School. Who's kicking ass and going to the playoffs. So, that's going to be fun. Um, I don't. What do I promote? I don't know. We just talked about everything I've I been doing, pretty much. I have a new post. Yeah. What I learned from New York Comic Con. I mentioned I just a couple times here over bad Sorgatron. For leaving you off. Sorgatron.com, Sorgatronmedia.com for all, plenty of Sorgatron Media specials and check out Chachi's stuff from the New York Comic Con. Uh, the last couple episodes that Chachi says. Um, yeah, and uh, we're gonna have a whole bunch of other projects coming up. Check out some of our unsung new this week. Yeah, Vivian's honor, Pirate Parrot, yeah. Chachi. Um and uh, monkeys, 
monkeys. Yeah. Monkeys? Monkeys. Yeah, so monkeys. Uh, hey, guys. Awesomecast.com. If you want to find more episodes and what we're talking about here, you can join us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Follow us on the Twitters at AwesomeCast. And uh, our Twitters, too. I'm at Sorgatron. Hi. Um, and also, uh, you know, email us. Contact at AwesomeCast.com or 724-25-ACAST. And uh, iTunes, Mediafly, Roku Boxes, YouTubes, Flip TVs. We're everywhere. Stitcher. It's a Stitcher. Stitcher app's pretty cool. Um, and that's it. I'm Sorg. For the other guys, you guys have been a pretty awesome chat room tonight. You guys, uh, you're usually a pretty awesome audience out there. Have a pretty awesome week. Pull is crucial. Amazing. So, uh, hey, Rob. Yes, are we sir. Wait, hold on. Are we broadcasting? We're broadcasting yet? and recording at the moment. Okay, so, uh, hey, Rob. Yes. Um, are there roads where we're going? No. <laughs> what the hell? What? Why didn't he do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know you were going to go there. Uh, well, I mean... I, I just needed to know um, that it, it, it affects my, my packing strategy. Have you? <laughs> the fuck? Where we're going, we don't need roads. And uh, right. so I organized all of my books. Yeah. And I have a pile of like eight that I need to read. And I can't get started on any of them. Like, I go to pick up a book, and I end up, like, getting distracted by TV or something. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, let's do a show before something else breaks.